For the next 30 minutes, we will explore the unexplained. From mysteries beyond our galaxy. To ghostly phenomena in our own backyard. We will dive into our psychic abilities. And explore everything from conspiracies to the just plain weird. Welcome to 30 Odd Minutes. If the truth is out there, we will find it. But only by sheer accident. Oh, hey, welcome. welcome to 30 Odd Minutes. We've got to get better at our landings. It's great to have you with us. We have landed the mothership right here in Union, Missouri. How cool is that? Uh, and behind me is the Screaming House. We're going to be talking about that in just a few moments. It's been an amazing couple of weeks. We've been very busy. Uh, I've been traveling a bunch. Went to Gettysburg. You saw that last week. We were live from Gettysburg. The mothership crashed, uh, crashed there at that old Civil War site. Incredible time. And then uh, last week was in Mansfield Reformatory. And you'll be seeing that episode in a couple of weeks. So do tune in. want to say hello to our good friends, our sweet, dear oddballs in the control center. How are you guys tonight? Hey! How's it going, Jeff? Excellent. I'm good. I'm good. I, um, I got this t-shirt in Mansfield, too. I told her I'd wear it. Thank you. That got to see. <laughs> I didn't even have to buy my own clothes. It's like we've half arrived. Oh, jeez. Yeah, Swag. Yeah. So, hey, watch our show at 30oddminutes.com. You can link to us there from uh, to iTunes. You can watch us on YouTube. You can watch us on Roku. All kinds of great places. And, uh, Sarah, where else can they watch us? I heard someone picked us up. Oh, hi. Yes, they did. So, hello to Farmington Community TV in Farmington, New Hampshire. They are picking up the 30-odd transmissions. We're Yay. happy to have you guys. Pretty cool. Yay. Yeah, excellent. Very Live free cool. or die. Love it. And we also had got a great email also up in the northeast corner. So this is Bangor, Maine from Jay. He said, heard about some show called 30 Odd Minutes via Spooky South Coast. Yay, Isn't that South Coast. <laughs> Yay. Um, but really, found your show's podcast on iTunes over the last weekend, and I have to say I love it. Taking a show like this, doing it live and unedited, and adding a twist of humor to the paranormal was a great idea. I have yet to find an episode I did not enjoy. Keep up the good work. Thanks, Aww. Jay. Keep watching. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we have a few recommendations. What are you to say? <laughs> One's not to avoid. The Just do not hit keep list. Keep watching. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Jay. That was fun. Hey, okay, so tonight we're going to be talking about uh, what it's like to live in a haunted home, a profoundly haunted home, which is, which is kind of a scary thing. Andrew, you've lived in a haunted house, correct? Yes, I have. Uh, for five and a half years, an apartment in uh, Hope, Rhode Island. And, I mean, what was that like? Uh, it was actually kind of fun because they were, um, they were nice spirits. They, they teased me a little bit, touched my feet sometimes in bed, hid things on me, but they were good spirits. Right, and things like that get you interested in a lifelong passion for, sure. for the paranormal. But nice spirits, as you said. What's it like to live with an extreme haunting? Tonight's guest knows all too well. In 2001, he unknowingly moved his family into a haunted home in Union, Missouri. What happened next was a series of events that scared the hell out of the father and his three children. These events have been featured on the Discovery Channel television show A Haunting Fear House, and in our guest's book, The Uninvited, The True Story of the Union Screaming House. He's the founder of Missouri Paranormal Research and a co-founder of the Paranormal Task Force. And tonight, he's all yours. Please welcome live from Union, Missouri, Stephen Lachance. Yeah. 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 How are you, sir? I'm doing good. Thank you for having me. Stephen, thank you for coming on and talking about this. Um, you've been on television shows to talk about this experience. You've written an entire book about it, and I know you've talked about it before, and it's kind of like reliving difficult moments, so we appreciate you, you doing this. Um, let's start at the beginning. What brought you to this particular house in Union, Missouri in 2001? Well, we were living in an apartment, and uh, we needed some place to live. Uh, I had three kids that I was raising on my own, so uh, we went looking for a place to live in. I found this house that uh, had three bedrooms. Uh, it seemed like the likely place with the yard with, that the, the kids could play in. Uh, so we, we went to move into it. You know what? It, it looked kind of like my grandmother's house. Right. Uh, so it was something that drew me to it. And I think this is most, this is likely the case for a lot of these houses. Uh, people find something about them that draws them to it. And in this case, I think it was, it just felt like home because of that reason. Um, so that's what draws to it. And, uh, 
we went we end up moving into it uh with um dire consequences a lot of horrible things happen to us in the process so but what so you move in and, and here's the house by the way we've landed in the, the front yard but here's a better look at the house um so people can see what we're talking about it does it looks like a, a regular old uh house just like any other it's any mo- there it is um yeah looks like a, a, a quaint great little house that you'd want to put your family in no doubt so when do you notice after you move in that something seems off well, almost right away. As a matter of fact, while we were moving in, a car drove by, and uh, the people in the car said, we hope you get along well here. Um, and, you know, and I thought, well, they were just being nice. Um, almost instantly uh, after moving in, uh, my son, uh, he, he started complaining about things. Um, I, I sent him into the basement, and he, uh, I, I found him screaming in the middle of the kitchen floor, claiming something chased him up from the basement. You know, and as a father, I'm like, it's the basement monster. Sure. Uh, but as soon as he was out of arm's reach for me, from that moment on, I would find him screaming. And I'm. this is more than just you know, screaming that I'm afraid. I mean, this kid was frightened beyond all belief. I mean, he was he was wide and shaken. Uh, the next thing that would happen is my daughter. She wouldn't sleep in her bedroom. You know, she would complain that she was having things happen to her. All three of the kids were going through something. You know, and I at this point, I'm thinking, well, you know, this is the move. It was too much for him. It was, you know, I was a single dad, so um, my wife had deserted us, so I'm thinking maybe that's what's going on with him. Uh, it led up to a point where uh, one night I was sitting and playing a game with him right before I went out of town. Uh, that's what we used to do. We used to turn everything off before I would go out of town for a week. I was a corporate trainer. Uh, we were sitting there playing a game, and I looked up, and I saw something in the kitchen doorway i looked back up and it was a smoky black figure i looked back down again thinking okay now i'm seeing things look back up and the figure moved into the family room in front of me um and then it dissipated now, uh, had you ever had an experience like that before no not, no. not in your life I, I i never thought about the paranormal or mm-hmm. anything like that before um it's not that I was a skeptic. I mean, I've been asked that before. Were you skeptical? No. It's just I. it wasn't on my radar. I mean, I was busy raising kids, you know. Sure. Uh, I never gave it much thought. Now, so go ahead. No, no. So, so one of the things I heard you talk about in the past is feeling like an electrical charge um, inside the house. Now, that's, I mean, where I live, I've never had that experience. So that seems unique. That seems different. What, what was that like? What did it feel like? It would start inside and kind of work its way out. It's kind of, you know, and then, you know, you would get goosebumps, but it wasn't, it was a little different than your normal goosebumps, you know, uh, and your hair would stand on end, uh, but it would start on the inside and work its way out. And my dad was a contractor, you know, he worked on contracting. So I would get, I got him and I said, you know, I think there's something wrong with the electricity. He came and checked out everything. Uh, there was uh, nothing covering the, uh, the electrical box that was it um but he felt it too while he was in the house and it would actually move you it would be in different places all the time um and he was like no that's not nothing i've ever felt before he couldn't explain it um but it, it was it was really strange because it was like this inside i, I, I don't want to sound strange but it was an inside tickle that would start first <laughs> and then it would it would it work would come back it would come out um and then, you know, you would feel it on the back of your neck, too. Yeah, so that electrical charge, which we've, you know, we know people who, who do a lot of ghost research will tell you, when you feel that in the air, you know, often something might be about to manifest. And, and so if that energy is there to work with, um, but still, it's got to be weird. You, you encounter that for the first time. And this is where you live. I want to remind everyone, this is 2001, and this is really before the ghost fad has really exploded. So... It's not like ghosts were on your mind and on every television show. That hasn't happened yet. That would come a few years later. Um, right. and, and so this is still, um, still kind of new. So what do you do when you say, okay, something is off with this house and it has nothing to do with the plumbing or the electrical. You know, what do you do when you, know, you realize you need some other kind of help? Well, you know, first I called the uh, landlord. Mm-hmm. And I, I asked the landlord, did anybody ever have any problems? Did they make any complaints about any type of thing like this? And the landlord said, no, I, I don't think so. I, I don't think they've had any problems here before. I, I don't think there was any complaints. And then she was the first one to say something about ghosts. Okay. You know, and then I'm like, uh-oh, I'm in trouble. 
<laughs> yeah, what do you do? Who do you, who do you call point. for that, right? Right, and then I, at that point, I was like, okay, you know, this is this is something I, that I need to do. Uh, I'm going to have to handle, but you know, and this is, you know, I don't know what I'm going to do at that point. You know, I, I don't. And I realized that I'm going to probably need um, clergy. You know, that was something that I thought I might want to try. Um, the Warrens are the only ones that I had ever heard of. Okay. You know. At that point, I think, you know, this was, and you're right, this is before the Ghost Craze. This is before Ghost Hunters um, or any of those shows. Uh, the Warrens were about it. I mean, they, you know, that's that's who you heard of at that point. Um, you know, you knew of Amityville a little bit, but the Warrens were it. So, you know, I went about looking for them. Uh, and, you know, and I sent an email to them. Uh, I sent an email to St. Louis University uh, trying to get a hold of them to see if I could get in touch with them. Uh, but things blew up before I could e get that type of help. Um, the house actually locked the children into a bedroom and wouldn't let me in to get to them before I could actually get the kind of help I needed. Well, well tell us about that. I mean, I can't imagine. I'm a dad, and, and I can't imagine something, anything, human, animal, or other, locks your kids in. It's on. I mean, you know, uh, uh, what do you do? You, what, what do you do at that moment? Well, you know, you try to get to them as fast as you can. Um, the house was shaking. It was screaming. The house would actually scream when it had when it went into these kind of things. It was a male scream, like something was trying um, to be hurt. Was well, something was being hurt? Right. Um, you could I could hear something coming down from upstairs. Uh, the boys were sleeping at that point w when it started happening because my daughter said, my brothers are sleeping. I don't know what's going on. The bedroom's doors were open at that point and they slammed shut. I ran to the bedroom door. Um, I tried to get into the bedroom uh, to open the door and the door wouldn't let me in. I started uh, throwing my body against the door and it wouldn't let me in. I could hear her screaming on the other side of the door. I kept throwing my body against the door over and over again. I could hear her screaming. And I mean, as a parent, to hear your child screaming and not being able to get to him has to be uh, probably the worst feeling in the world. I, I can only imagine, yeah. You know, um, at one point, I screamed, God help me. And that's when the door gave way. Uh, the boys were stirring. I yelled to them to run to, to get out of the house. Um, by the time I got to her, she was in shock. And did, and, uh, did she ever talk about what she saw, what she experienced from the other side of that door? She she heard more screams. Okay. Um, she heard different screams. She heard more than just the man screaming. Right. Um, she, you know, she um, she heard more screams. Did she? There was another doorway, and she at the that uh, in that room other than the door that I was trying to get to. She heard something pounding on that door. She said. Wow. Um, that door slammed open as I it grabbed her and was heading out of the room. I never turned around to see what was on my feet. You know, something was behind me. Um, you know, I just wanted out at that point. You know, I, I wanted to get her out. I felt, I felt like we were in danger. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No, danger is the. I mean, you react. So you get everyone out of the house that night. What did you do? Did you get to a hotel? Family? I mean, did you collect yourself? Well, I, I, my, my mom, I had been on the phone with my mom right before when, when everything started happening. I threw the phone. Yeah. Um, she, so I knew they were coming. I went up to the corner, and I could look down into the house from that corner. And I saw something going from room to room looking for us. So it was a black, smoky figure, right. which I had seen that black, smoky figure once before. Um, so I knew it was, I, you know, I, it was obvious it was looking for us. Yeah. So I stayed there and waited for them to come and get us. And uh, they, we stayed there until I had to uh, sublease the house. Uh, the landlord found, she told me it was her, her family members that were subleasing. She promised me it wasn't children she was subleasing to. Um, on the day that I was moving out and getting our belongings out of the house, a car pulled up and little children came out of the car. She had, she had leased it to uh, children again. Wow. My gosh, and and just a, so so once you're out of the house, I mean, do you hear from other owners that that move in after you? Um, you know, uh, I saw that it was later, about three years later, when I heard from other people that were living there that were having problems. Right. And uh, at that point, they were having extreme problems, and they came to me and asked me if I would help them. 
uh, you know, because they had heard that I had had a whole lot of problems. Uh, they had, uh, at that point, had pretty much a lot of the same things going on, uh, you know, uh, except, you know, I remember one of the stories that the woman told me was she took her granddaughter upstairs to show her the kitten that they had just gotten, and the kitten was laying there with its back broken. Oh, my gosh. Uh, yeah, killed a stuff cat? like that. So, so this entity actually killed an, an animal? Mm. Yeah, it would do that. Oh my God! I mean, that's I mean, that's not. You don't want to be near that. That's that's um, that's not like your your average run of the mill haunting. Now, do you do you, through research and things like that? What what was it with this house? Was there murder? Was there there's something about the land? Uh, what was going on before it? The house was built on the slave quarters of an old Civil War captain. Um, it was also um, about a hundred to five hundred yards away from the house was what uh, was a massive graveyard there for the old county poorhouse. Um, across the street of the house, a woman had taken an axe to her husband and killed him. It was bad land. Right. Oh, my gosh. Amazing stuff. I want to ask our, our, our folks, Matt, Andrew, Sarah, have, have you ever heard anything like this? Uh, I mean, I know you guys have investigated hauntings before, but anything like this where animals are being killed? Yes. Okay, good uh, answer, Matt. <laughs> Jeez. Expand. Uh, in particular, it was birds. Uh, it would uh, snap the necks of uh, the birds that they had. It was uh, it, parrots, to be precise. And uh, the parrots would go nuts in the house, and uh, the owner got up one day to have two of them in separate cages with their necks broken. Oh, my gosh. I mean, messing with your your fa messing with yourself, messing with your family. I mean, that's 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 incredible. And so, did, you know, what's going on there now, Matt? Did the folks move out? Are they still dealing with it? I eventually calmed down. They still live there, yes, but right. they haven't had as severe activity. Right. Now, here's the thing. You know, people say when you're dealing with a, a severe haunting, well, just move out. And I don't know if anyone's taken a look at the real estate market uh, lately, but just moving out quite often is not an easy option. Um, you know, if you're renting, you're in a lease. If you break that lease, who else is going to rent to you? If you own it, you have to sell it. And if you're, if you're paying that mortgage, not too many people can afford two mortgages at the same time or a mortgage and a rent and things like that. So what can people do, Stephen? I mean, what, what do people do who are stuck in a, in a horrible house like this? You know what? What I what I figured out for the second family was figure out what the rental laws are in your in your state mm -hmm. uh, for the second family because they were in that situation they, they couldn't move um, they they didn't have a whole lot of money and you know so I, I I figured out the rental laws in the state what I found out in the state of Missouri is they they could not pay their rent for three months before. The, the state laws kicked in and then they could be evicted and it took 30 days before the before they could go to court and evict them so that gave them four months you know before they could go to court and evict them and then they got another 30 days so that was five months they saved that money and that was the money they could use to go and move gotcha. you know so use the system in a way that is for your own good so that's how we did it you know right. that's how we were able to help them you know and i've done this with other cases i always tell them go and figure out how you're going to use the state because believe it or not a lot of these people that are running running these bad properties and a lot of these bad properties are rentals because a lot of the bad properties there's nothing else that you can do with them is the and so there you just figure out the rental laws and yeah. that's going to help you you know it's it's going to help you at least figure Figure out what you're going to do, and believe it or not, the landlords know they're running bad property. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm sure. I mean, when you have a, a case again and again. All right, Stephen, we're going to be right back. We're going to take a quick break for our news, and then we'll come back and talk about your investigation of this house uh, years later. Right back. Okay, thank you. In the town of Stoke-on-Trent, England, the childhood home of Captain Edward John Smith has been put up for sale. Smith was captain of the ill-fated HMS Titanic, which sank after hitting an iceberg on its maiden voyage in 1912. The current owners of the house, Neil and Louise Bronner, have been renting the property for it the last 10 years, and in that time their tenants have complained about hearing strange footsteps and feeling icy cold spots in the house as well. The Bronners believe that the ghost of Captain Smith may be responsible for the paranormal activity. Someone should warn Adele if she's thinking about moving to Stoke-on-Trent. 
In other news, another UFO has been caught on video by a passenger traveling on an airliner. This video was shot on April 7, 2012, during a flight over Seoul, South Korea. A similar object was captured with an iPhone by a passenger on a KLM flight near Amsterdam on March 17, 2012. And a video shot over Canberra, Australia, seems to show the same style of UFO traveling at a high rate of speed. We at 30 Odd Minutes would like to make it clear that the craft seen in these videos is not our mother ship. Well, maybe the one near Amsterdam. Back to you, Jeff. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you for the news. A lot happening lately. A lot of, uh, you know, we were talking earlier uh, before the show started about how uh, people were saying everyone's got these, these iPhones now and these, these phones with cameras. How come we're not getting more paranormal evidence? We are. Um, is it genuine? Well, we, we hope. We're going to find out. But it is a UFO. It's unidentified. It's flying. And it's strange. Very curious stuff. Very curious. Okay. Uh, Listen, when, it talks, when we talk about haunted houses now, I mean, it seems in vogue. Uh, so many people talk about their home being haunted. You see all the various ghost hunting shows that investigate people's haunted houses. Uh, everybody seems to want a haunted house, and that's why we went to our own Dr. Dreck to ask him what he thought of the subject. Here's what he had to say. Hi, Oddballs. Do you feel depressed because you're the only person in your neighborhood that doesn't have his own haunted house? Well, weep no more, because for the genius of myself, I have developed a new application that you can use in your own home, and I call it Photoshock. Yes, with Photoshock, all you have to do is take any existing digital picture of your home and insert not just a ghost, not just any ghost, but a celebrity ghost into any room of your house that you want to impress your friends. Imagine how your living room can be spiced up by the ghost of George Washington. How about some extra pizzazz to your bathroom by having Humphrey Bogart hanging out there, huh? And what dining room is complete without Richard Nixon sitting at the table? Yes, you can get all these celebrity ghosts and more. 300 more in this wonderful package from Photoshop. Send $799 in care of the station to Dr. Dreck. Unmarked bills, please. So get your Dr. Dreck Photoshop app today. Because remember, home is where the haunt is. You know, I think Dr. Dreck is starting to use his position to uh, yeah. better his own financial... Yeah, we should uh, look into that. We should, we're going we're gonna to get in trouble <laughs> eventually. But uh, anyway, okay. So, Stephen, now, of course, uh, every house is haunted, as Dr. Dreck so eloquently pointed out. Um, now, you go back. You're still in Union. You're, you're still nearby. You go back to investigate this house. You sent us a couple of photos. I want to show them. Uh, this first one. Tell us about this hand coming out of the wall, because this is, this is freakish. What, what happened uh, when this photo was taken? This was during one of the investigations. This this wasn't there when the photo was taken, or at least we didn't know it, and until we uh, got the we, we looked at the photo and we see this thing coming out of the wall, uh, and there it was, and it was something coming. The, you, well, you see it, yeah, yeah, and uh, there it is, and it was in one of the girls' bedrooms uh, at that time, which made it even more disturbing. Uh, because the young girl was having a lot of problems. She was waking up uh, in, in the morning and in the middle of the night and having a lot of problems. But uh, this is what was uh, shown. Uh, and when we found it, it was, it was very disturbing because of the amount of trouble she was going through. Yeah, gosh. And then, and then there was another one where you've got this photo taken outside. It looks almost like you've got a, a bunch of entities there in the photo. There they are. There's obviously a car and the chain link fence, but then those figures. You know what was you know when I first saw this photo, you know I almost dismissed it when they showed it to me because it, it looked like a blur photo, until you look at the chain link fence and the chain link fence is so so clear, and then you look and somebody you, you know look to the far right and it look it's actually. Uh, it looks like a portal area where they were coming out and you look in the center and I wish you, I, I would have sent you uh, what's in that center area because uh, what's in that center area is, is a gathering of uh, what looks more like entities and when you pull this up Jeff I don't know if you got a chance to do it to see them closer mm -hmm. uh, they're, the faces, uh, and it's not matrixing by any means, to see what's coming out, what's these faces in the center there, um, and to see what they look like at the, in the middle there. Right. Um, there's just me, face, uh, just a whole bunch of people. I can't talk about it. It's, it's yeah, something no. else. Um, when we showed that to the priest, though, um, he, 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 he looked at it, turned it over, and said, I don't want anything to do with it. It's a mockery of the crucifixion. 
Wow. Uh, and that was the priest. That was for Father for Ricardo Reese from the Vatican, too. He didn't want anything to do with it either. You know, um, either one of them. Uh, they 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 completely dismissed it. Uh, it as something evil. Now you sent us uh, a couple of EVP, electronic voice phenomena, um, that that were taken during one of the investigations. This first one is actually a recording played back backwards that we're going to hear. Let's take a listen. Uh, we'll talk about it and play it again. Here we go. <laughs> So, hey, let's play it one more time. It sounds like, hey, Louie, I can't do something. Want me to get help. I mean, what, what were the circumstances around this recording? This was taken in the basement, and it was um, it was an EVP that was gotten. It was, it was it's a reverse, and it was hey Louis, I, I can't do it. Want me to get help? Uh, a lot of times when you have um, what, what they say uh, when you're around portal areas, um, you're around uh, a, a lot of energy. You'll get the reverse right. uh, EVPs, um, and, and that's 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 playing in reverse. Oh um, yeah. Now the second one, this one really freaks me out because the voice is so clear. We'll play it a couple times. Um, you're going to hear a, 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 one of the researchers uh, talking, and then at the end you hear a woman's voice come in. Take a listen. So I analyze very good if something abnormal comes up on this. Right there at the end, it's you hear this. It's such a clear female voice saying, "It's all right." Listen again. So I analyze very good if something abnormal comes up on this. That freaks me out because it sounds so distinct. It sounds like a little old woman um, to me. That, that uh, it doesn't. It's not garbled. It's just ah, uh, God. I mean, what do you when you hear this things when you when you're back in this house again? What what thoughts go through your head when you when you're getting this evidence? You know, the thing is, is I was so spoiled with it, you know, and I, I didn't save a lot of them <laughs> because, it, first of all, I didn't know I needed to. Right. Um, you know, I, they, it was a candy store, a virtual candy store of voices. Um, we would get them constantly, you know. Thank God Greg Myers came along and knew that we needed to save them. He, he saved them um, because you would get voices like that every day. Right. Um, you know, and they would come and go, and it's like to listen to them now. It's creepy. It's yeah. creepy, you know. I, I can only but, imagine. Uh, Stephen, we only know, have a couple and, minutes. It was different cast of characters all the time. Right. Stephen, we only have a couple minutes left. But real quick, I want to talk about the show Haunting. Um, how accurate was that? What aired? You know, we, we've got a graphic. People might recognize the Haunting on Discovery Channel. How accurate was that portrayal of what really happened? It was the Disney version. Okay. It, it really was. <laughs> it's the best way to describe it. Okay. So, um, so, so not too close. And I'm sure that and, and working with others prompted you to write your book, um, you know, The Uninvited. And, and that's really the details of the story, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And, and I've heard you speak about this topic. And I know, um, you know, it's important that we keep talking about it because other people are going through the same thing. I know now you've, you've met some of them. And, uh, and are people still coming to you and saying, you know, what do I do in a haunted house in our, in our last 30 seconds? What's the advice for someone who's suffering like this? You know, is to document, document, document. That's the best thing you can do because when you do find the help, that's what they're going to need is they're going to need the documentation and document daily um, because they're going to need to know exactly what is going on. And that's, that's, that's what they, they want from you is so document, write down, keep a diary. Right. And last question is, does this stuff follow you still? Yes. And it's still at the house? Yes. Wow. Amazing stuff. Stephen, thank you for joining us tonight. The time flew by. Uh, really appreciate you being here and, and sharing this story again. I know it can't be easy to, to relive, especially when you've got your children involved. Um, I can't even imagine that as a dad, what, what you go through with a, an invisible enemy like that. So we appreciate you being here. Folks, we appreciate you being here. It's time for the mothership to warm up the engines. we got to leave Union, Missouri and uh, head off into time and space and to a future mission. So thank you all for being here for the Oddballs and Us. Until next time, everybody, stay odd. All right.
Thank you.